Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillah il hadi ila sawab. Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah el kerim el vehhab. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve resuluhu. Atahu el hikmete ve fasla el hitab. Salvatullahi ve selamuhu aleyh ve ala ali beytihi ve ala ashabihi el kiram. Dear brothers and sisters, inshallah today we will visit with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and hoping that we can learn from him a tip or two how to create an effective community. I will have two major stops in my journey and I'll try to put them together inshallah at the end. The first stop will be how the Prophet carved a space and a place for the young men and women of the Muslims. And I will, I shall go with you on a few stops, some scenes, hoping that they can help us see how he did it. <coughs> the first one, when the delegation of Medina early on came to the Prophet expressing their interest in this new message of Islam. And they had a request that to send an ambassador with them to the Medina so he can help in promoting this new message and answer questions and engage people. And as we've learned from the Prophet, he has always picked the most qualified for the job. And we know the famous name Mas'ab ibn Umair who he was picked and whether he was 17 or 19 it doesn't really matter you have different counts nonetheless he was a young man who was known for his wisdom calmness beautiful voice and reciting among other things and we know that he went to Medina produced a great work great job very successful where he, not only he opened many homes to Islam, but he opened minds and hearts. And we, there are counts by the historian that they will not, you will not find a house without having Islam in it, whether by embracing it or by softening the heart that they won't be hostile and so on and so forth. It was a very difficult task. A lot of times he was challenged by the leadership of Meccan, yet the young Mas'ab, because of his qualities, remained calm, composed, and delivered a great result. Because we all know that Medina came, the forces for Islam later to follow, and we can say it is the blessing of God Almighty and the hard work of the young Mas'ab in doing this job. I'd like to travel to another scenery also something that we all know that the Prophet ﷺ, when he learned that there's a plot to assassinate him and he was known for even before Islam that he is a man of honesty and trust. So many people of Mecca looked at him as a the safety deposit as all the deposits they would leave it with him and many many of them were non-Muslims. But these qualities and these traits were there. And during the chaos time, can you imagine somebody's plot, there's a plot of assassination yet, because of his characteristic, of his qualities, the Prophet didn't want to compromise on them, and he tasked the young Ali to deliver this deposit to the rightful owners. 
another young man, and we all know that he did a great job and right on the money. And again, you will find he had his mark, as Mas'ab did in the history of Islam. I, there are so many, I'll just pick another one. We all know that as the Prophet in the Battle of Uhud, when the Muslims learned that their enemy is marching and this is serious business and they want to finish Muslims, we all know that as we've learned from the Prophet is the Shura, is the consultation, collective thinking, and he brought the members of the community and a big chunk of it were a young, uh, uh, young Muslims who were ready to defend and to stand against their enemy. And they've contributed an opinion that they need to move out of Mecca, out of the Medina, to fight off uh, the enemy. Yet we all know that the Prophet and a few others wanted to stay in Medina and to, to, to really face their enemy. But, you know, you're young and there's a lot of zeal and uh, the collective thinking and so on. So the decision was that they will move out. And we all know the consequences. Yet, that the eye-opener to all of us, you have the young element, the young members, had a say, even to the point where the Prophet did not agree with them, but it impacted the collective thinking, and the Prophet went along with it. In other words, the Prophet was negotiating the role and the participation of the youth across from the beginning to the end and to secure that there is a role for them to secure that they have a self-worth. They have a role to play. And we all know that, alhamdulillah, they played it and they delivered greatness. What is very important, you don't suddenly expect someone to raise to greatness like Mus'ab or like Ali or like the, the people that I mentioned only because the responsibility came and knocking on the door or the opportunity. It, they have been conditioned. The Prophet ﷺ created a, an environment and a culture or inclusiveness. People feel, the young here, feel that they have a role to play. The Prophet believes in them and he believed in them. And when people believe in you, then you require the skills and the training and all the other things. But if you feel that there's no role for you to play, why should you bother? You will go and waste your energy doing something else. No, this is not what Islam brought to us. Here we find Islam when it came to the Prophet and told him, That believers, male and female, are close to one another. They enjoy what's right and they forbid what's wrong. That means they stand against what is good and stand and, and be for what is against what is wrong. Here the Quran lay down the foundation that it doesn't matter of age. Believers young and old, equally responsible. That creates, of course, it conditions the heart and the mind of the people and the Prophet وسلم, showed us how. So that would be my first stop. I will depart from this to another stop. How the Prophet ﷺ also carved a place and a space and a role for women as well. And I will take us on scenery that also it is in the footprints of history where we all know about Sulh al hudaybiyah the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Muslims wanted to rejuvenate themselves spiritually, decided to perform one of the, one of the acts of worship, uh, Umrah. So they left, and as they draw near Mecca, Mecca decided that they will not allow them in. And we all know that what happened. There was a negotiation back and forth. Uh, the, the people of Mecca, they were very arrogant. They were uh, very harsh in their dealing with the Prophet and with the Muslims. Yet the Prophet ﷺ chose the path of peace over confrontation, as he has done in, 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 in his life. Then they signed a treaty. Guess what? 
the majority of the Muslims did not accept because, you know, when you are on a journey on spirituality, you want to connect with God Almighty, the expectation, the emotions, there are so many things are taking place and somebody comes and tells you no. That's, that's, a, that's a great shock. So they were shocked psychologically and emotionally and when the Prophet Sallallahu who now had a treaty and subject is closed that they will leave and they will end the act of worship the Umrah and they will go back and they will come another year and their, their, their other part of the treaty nonetheless they, the scholars and the historians said they were, that there was about what was happening because people, when the Prophet told them to end the Umrah, they said, no, disobey the Prophet. This is a big thing. He was a head of the community as a leader and he was the messenger of God. And both of them are problematic. Then the Prophet ﷺ realized this is something very, this is, is threatening the fabric of the community. This is a very serious thing. So the Prophet pulled out and then he goes to his tent to be received by his wife, Umm Salama. And he was agitated, very upset, telling her what happened. And you will find Umm Salama here assess where the Prophet is so she had to calm him down. So she told him and she reminded him that don't blame them, they love you and they respect you to who you are to them, but nonetheless they have an expectation and don't blame them or the Prophet of Allah. Now after she calmed him down, she offered a solution. She told him, why don't you end it? You know, we take off the haram, close the towel and then shave your head and do the sacrifice, go through the rest of the act and trust you and me, they will follow you. So the Prophet he did this great advice, exactly what she recommended. He went out and the whole camp changed and then they went, out, they, they went along with the Prophet and they lived up to the treaty. Brothers and sisters, here the very fabric of the Muslim community was threatened. A great idea was delivered by a woman. And here let us also stop and think. Unless she was conditioned she was used to a culture of exchange of ideas where she knows that the Prophet believes in her opinion. Why should she dig, dig deep in her uh, 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 reason and find a creative idea that none of the companions, the great man around the Prophet delivered it. No, the wahi came. It was by a woman who was again conditioned as the Prophet has done from the beginning, where they felt their role and their place in the history of Islam, then you will be able to contribute creatively, you will be able to contribute in an effective way. Like we, like we saw with the youth, you don't suddenly expect when the opportunity comes knocking on the door, you suddenly expect, expect someone to raise to greatness unless they are conditioned to do so. And here we find Umm Salama. As the Prophet, again, the verses that I quoted earlier, male and female close to one another. Not just male, male and female equally responsible to enjoy what's right and to be creative and to stand for justice and stand for peace and do what is beneficial to the society and really stand against what is harmful to the society. So being conditioned, being pre prepared, that's the culture that Quran promoted that the Prophet taught then and only then you will find people like Umm Salama is able to rise to the occasion and deliver a great idea that saved Muslims of that time. So brothers and sisters we find that such attitude, such readiness wasn't only with Umm Salama. We all know that Bayat al-Nisa, the pledge of, of women at the time where Islam was weak and needed every support they were there and we all know that that meant serious it's not a trivial participation this is a serious they were in the battlefield they, when needed to be fighters they were fighters when needed to be second line to 
uh, offer uh, help to the to the wounded. They were there when they were called upon economically. They gave uh, everything that they had. They were there. They were continuously there. But trust you and me, unless that culture conditioned them, they felt that the that Islam believed in them, the Prophet believed in them, the community believed in them, they will not go out all the way and sacrifice what the way we have seen. Great ideas, ready to do what, what, what it takes to promote that movement that's supposed to deliver people from darkness to light. And this is the Prophet ﷺ, what he did. And sometimes if we take back and we wonder how in 20 years, he, 20 some years, he delivered prosperity and success, it is by creating an effective community where it takes advantage of all its members and use the resources that are available to them and then only then can produce the prosperity and the success that we, we saw that uh, the, 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 the Prophet and the community of the Muslims did. And when we are celebrating, whether it is his birthday, whatever we celebrate come to the Prophet, I hope that these type of teachings will come to your mind and we celebrate them as well. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي كتب على نفسه الرحمة وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters The Prophet was the example to so many throughout history and as we heard from the first khutbah, Alhamdulillah, he has a lot to offer us. And we as a Muslim community, like we always do, we look at that model, the shining model to guide us and sometimes to guide the path where there is darkness. We're hoping that light can forge us to move forward to prosperity and to success. And we can't escape the reality that we all are aware of. We, the, the, we, any, any of us will listen to the debate that's taking place between the Republican candidates and you will find that Islam is used in a negative way. The most recent, we know that what has transpired in New York about the police department spying on Muslim, uh, uh, the Muslim community. And I have to say, alhamdulillah, our community, um, we, have a we, we have forged for years now a great partnership with the city of Los Angeles, uh, both the administration as well as the police. And we have developed a healthy, and good relationship. And today, the, both the city of Los Angeles and, and the mayor's office with the police department came and we had a press conference upstairs with IMPAC to really stand against what is happening in New York, that how the police and the city should collaborate and work with Muslims as a partner, not as a suspect. And for that, we applaud them, and we thank Chief Mike Downing being with us today, as he has always done, and the, the, the representative of the city of Los Angeles, and we pray for their success as well. However, we hope that this model of Los Angeles becomes a, not a minority, because it's not only Los Angeles, there are others as well, but what we are hearing, it is not the majority, and we hope that this model becomes the majority, inshallah. Also, let us face it, while our Islamic Center has, for more than 50 years, has created a space and a role for our young men and women, for women old and young, 
and they are they are feeling that this place is theirs and we have seen what they have done they have done miracles but it is unfortunate that this is not the majority of the mosques nor the majority of the muslim community we are hoping that we also can be that model that example that can be can be passed on to others as well because let's face it and i will use any any i mean a number of a team if you have a team of 10 who is supposed to win a championship and you have the three quarter of it sidelined uh, there's no way you can win you need the five players I'll use basketball, you need the five players, and you need the bench, you need the whole team. <coughs> so we cannot win prosperity and success and negotiate the future of Islam with only one-fourth of the team is on the, on, on the field. It will not work. The Prophet taught us that. Only inclusiveness, all members, and create an effective community, then and only then you can reach prosperity and success as the prophet. And believe you and me, now more than ever, we need to negotiate the future of Islam and we need to make sure that we are part of the mosaic America that we all know it. And nobody will do that but us, but we cannot do it shorthanded. We have to do it with all the team and we have to make sure that as the prophet has taught us, we have to make sure that we are that effective team, inshallah. So let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who heed his call. Learn from his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray to Allah to make us among those who have pure faith. Who they strengthen their faith by heeding the calls of the Quran. By following the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are part of an effective community and to help us to achieve success and prosperity. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى سَيِّدَّ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ أَقِمِ